guys, what's up and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be about Phoenix, who's a little wired right now, because it's going to be later in the evening, so she's waking up and going nuts. Also, you can tell us is about Phoenix by looking at our cutie's enclosure. I have his towel up, which means the snake is out. Phoenix causes him stress, because she is scary to him. And I don't want to cause him stress, he was here first. So I put that up and you can't see her. Normally, if I were to take her out, I would have done it earlier in the day. But today I was at the zoo all day, so I was having to film kind of later at night. So hopefully the quality of this video is good because I have no sun coming through my window right now. So for anyone that has not met her yet, this is Phoenix, my corn snake who is full of energy right now. If you follow me on Instagram, you've definitely seen some pictures of her, but yes, that is Phoenix. So Phoenix was a rescue. She is two years old, so I got her back in May, I believe, from a lady that was moving. The lady seemed to really love Phoenix, so she says she handled her a lot, which is why when I got her, she adjusted to me very, very quickly and very well, very easily. Um, she was not housed properly though. She was housed very not great, which is why I call it a rescue situation. Normally people would call it rehoming, but I'm calling it a rescue. I'm going to do another video where I talk about my views on rescue, adoption, and rehoming and what they all mean to me and how I classify them. But Simply put, Phoenix was a rescue. Um, I'll look and see if I still have the pictures that the lady sent me originally of Phoenix. Um, so you can see kind of what she was living in. Basically, Phoenix was very, very overweight when I got her. Obesity is one of the number one health problems in captive snakes. And she was definitely very, very fat. When I talked to her last owner originally, and asked her what her feeding schedule looked like. She said she was feeding Phoenix every three days. An adult mouse, every three days. So it's amazing that she doesn't have other health problems considering you're supposed to wait at least like 48 hours after feeding a snake to handle them. Apparently she handled Phoenix all the time, but she was feeding her every three days. So if you catch my drift, she was probably not leaving her alone to digest before handling her. She was very, very, very fat. People called their snakes noodles. She was literally a noodle. She was more like a hot dog. If a hot dog and a noodle had a baby, that would be Phoenix. So not only was she severely overweight and being fed way too often, but she was also being kept in a 20 tall enclosure. Not even 20 long, but 20 tall. Phoenix is probably about four foot long. I think that's what we decided. A 20 tall is definitely not big enough for her. And you'll see if I find those pictures, if I already put them in, that it looked like she was being kept on dirt. When I got her in her enclosure, she was being kept on a reptile carpet. So either way, she wasn't able to burrow and corn snakes like to burrow. So I made sure before I got her that I had gotten a bag of aspen and literally when she figured out she could burrow, it was like a child in a cake shop. And it was the cutest thing, I got it on video, so her first burrow. So if I can find that, I'll put it in right now. So also in her old enclosure were rocks. And these rocks, I kid you not, had mice fur stuck to them and they reeked of death. Basically, once we got her into the house, we took everything in her old enclosure and threw it all out. It was all gone. The repta carpet was gone. Rocks, gone. This was at the end of the semester before I was going home where I had a lot of extra driftwood. So I did keep her sticks to climb on. I still have one of them in her enclosure. 
If you saw her enclosure upgrade video, you would have seen it. Um, actually, in that video, I think I used two sticks, but one of them now is gone. Um, the other thing is she sent her with a heat mat. However, that heat mat, I'm glad I noticed it before I set my apartment on fire and lost all of our security deposits. The cord for the heat mat was, it was about to fall apart. It was literally, you could see the wires inside, they were sticking out. I tossed it and I pulled lamps from inside Arcadius's enclosure to heat her enclosure because he doesn't use the bottom half of his enclosure so I had lights down there that I never turned on because if it was never down there would have been a waste of electricity. So I took those out and used them for her. Of course I had extra bulbs laying around from Arcadius so it was pretty lucky. So she was all set until I went home and upgraded her to a 30 gallon which I recorded for you guys so I'll put a thing right here if that's where it shows up. I think that's where it shows up. So yeah, that's kind of Phoenix's story and how I got her. I have yet to be pooped on by her and I have yet to be bit by her. She almost got me my very first day. I wasn't the brightest. She was my first snake and I reached my hand in the Tupperware container that she had been put in um, to pull her out, which was not very smart. This poor snake had been in that container all day. I had classes and work before I went and picked her up, and the lady put her in that Tupperware container that morning. So she was in that container for probably, I think, seven hours, and then had a car ride, and then was with people she didn't know in a place she didn't know. So obviously she was a little freaked out. She didn't trust me yet. And here I was sticking my hand in her tub to take her out. So she struck at me, mouth closed though, hissed, the whole nine yards, just trying to be threatening and scary. So then I got smart and just decided that I would put the whole Tupperware with her in it in the enclosure and let her crawl out in her own time and kind of look around and discover the area. So then what I did for a couple days after that, before I handled her, because I did leave her alone for a little while, um, before handling her, I actually read this online somewhere, I forget where, but I took a sock and I wore it around my hand for a little while and then put it in her enclosure because then she had something in there that smelled like me. It's kind of like what you do with puppies when they're like in the crate at night all alone. You put in like a shirt that you wear that has your scent on it. So that's what I did with her. I wore a sock around on my hand and then put in the enclosure and I actually caught her like laying on it a couple of times. So that made me feel pretty good about her starting to get used to me. I mean, I think it works. I mean, she's a nice snake anyway, so who knows if it actually did anything. But it doesn't hurt to try stuff like that, so I mean. So she is an albino, which is why she's all orange and beautiful. Corn snakes were actually the first snake that I fell in love with. Um, I remember going to the zoo as a little girl, and the corn snakes were always my favorite out of all the reptiles. So I knew that someday I'd want one, and I knew that they had it had to be my first snake. So me getting a corn snake as my first snake actually had nothing to do with her being a beginner reptile. I just knew that a corn snake had to be my first snake. So yeah, thanks for watching. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you want to see more of Phoenix or anybody else. And subscribe to my channel and maybe hit that notification bell so you don't miss any videos when they come out.